So we've added signals, let's subtract them, which makes the op amp a differential amplifier or a comparator, or just a subtractor if you want to think of it that way. Now the operational amplifier is a differential amplifier, and that's why it's been doing the things we wanted it to do so far. Why am I only now getting around to using it as a differential amplifier? Op amps are just silly that way. But the good news is there's more beautiful symmetry. You know how we took two common emitter amplifiers and smushed them together to make a differential amplifier? Well, we can kind of take an inverting and non-inverting operational amplifier circuit, smush them together, mostly, and get the differential amplifier. So let's do it. Let's say I have two voltages, VP and VN. VP for positive, VN for negative. VP would go in the non-inverting input and VN would go in the inverting input. So V out, we want to equal some gain times VP minus VN. So if our gain is two, this is three and this is one, three minus one is two times two is four. Standard differential amplifier. So we have our standard input resistors and we'll call both of these R in. They're the same value. They don't have to be. You can use four different, re there's gonna be four resistors. You can use different resistor values for all of it and you'll get different result curves basically, but the way I'm about to do it, using these two the same and the other two the same, is the way that you get a well-behaved simple A times VP minus VN. And trust me, if we do four different ones, the math gets gnarly and you have to use something called superposition to even solve it, and it's just gross and silly and there's not a reason to do it. So we're just gonna assume these two are the same. We have an operational amplifier with two output resistors. These will be the same value as well, R out and R out. And of course, our V out, V out. Now here's where the magic happens. The feedback goes through the negative end, the inverting end. The positive end here, the non-inverting end, goes through to zero. And we have two lovely voltage dividers here. So the first thing you'll notice is, oh, first thing you'll notice is missing wires. Of course, this goes to the inverting and non-inverting inputs like so. So voltage divider between VP and zero goes to the non-inverting. Voltage divider between VN and V out goes to the inverting. So we have these two different voltage dividers. Now, as usual, the assumptions about an op amp for the math is that the inputs have infinite impedance, so no current going in. The output has infinite current, so no impedance. And it's operated such that both inputs are exactly the same. They're not necessarily zero, but they're the same. So that internally, it's actually putting out a zero. In reality, you get that sliver with the crazy gain, and it's your output minus a sliver, or missing a sliver in one direction or the other. And then the better the gain in the op amp, the smaller that sliver, the more accurate the output. So what is the summing point? Well, there's no feedback in this one. So whatever VP is, your voltage divider between VP and zero sets the summing point. It sets what is going to be at the non-inverting input. So the feedback has to set the inverting input to that value, and it does it through the feedback like usual. Let's assume all of these resistors are the same value. Just for fun, let's say 10K ohms, 10K ohms, 10K ohms, and 10K ohms. Now, what's the result? Well, luckily, it's very simple. V out equals R out over R in, not M, in, times VP minus VN. Exactly what we want. R out over R in is our gain, and that's the math function. So R out over R in, if they're both 10K, is going to be one. So this is unity gain. It's simply subtracting them and giving us the exact result. So let's further say VP is minus three, VN is two. Minus three minus two is minus five. So V out should be minus five since we have no gain. Well, what do we have? Up here, first of all, minus three voltage divider with zero and these are equal, so it's half. So the summing point is minus 1.5. I'm going to do the math later. Right now, just take my word for it. Hold on and I'll prove it in a minute. But the point is, if these are equal, it's gonna be half the voltage between the two. So the summing point should be minus 1.5. Well, the result we want is minus five. So since again, these are the same, this voltage divider should get half of the difference. Well, two 
and minus 5 are different by 7. Half of 7 is 3.5. So if you take 3.5 away from 2, that's 1.5 away from 0, is negative 1.5. Negative 1.5 is halfway between 2 and negative 5. So the inputs are equal as we want. So that's the magic. And of course, if you have different values, it works out the same way. But that's the magic. And that's the circuit. If all you care about is having a differential amplifier with an op amp, congratulations, you're done. You'll also notice this is not inverting. R out over Rn is not negative. So you're going to get Vp minus Vn with no inversion. And there's really not anything more to say about the circuit itself. We've seen how to do op amps before, it's just this configuration. The feedback stabilizes and there you go. So I suppose now it's math time. As I mentioned before, if you have four different resistor values and you try to solve the math, you have to use the superposition technique and it's kind of annoying. But this, assuming the two R in and R out are the same, is what gets you this well-behaved circuit anyway, so you're going to do that anyway. So there's no reason to solve the more complex math to then just say, but if R in and R out are equal, then it simplifies to this. Let's just do it simply in the first place. R V P and V N. Both of these are R in, connected to their summing points. At the summing point, I will call the voltage V S for summing. Then we have our other resistor, that'll be R out. V P is connected to zero, zero volts. V N is connected to V out, standard voltage dividers. So now we have two different currents. We have I P and I N. One current going through both parts of the top voltage divider and one current going through both parts of the bottom voltage divider because we assume the current out of here is zero. So as usual, we'll just say that I P equals, we could call this I P in equals I P out. See what I mean? The in and the out, they're the same. So we just use our Ohm's law like usual, I equals V over R. So VP minus VS, VP minus VS over R in equals Vs minus zero is just Vs over R out. And we have another equality, Vn minus Vs over R in equals Vs minus V out, Vs minus V out over R out. Now we don't care what Vs equals, it's going to be dynamic based on the input voltages. All we care about is the input and output voltages and the resistor values. So let's solve one of these for Vs to get rid of it. Let's do the one that has no feedback. That ought to be easier. So the first thing I'm going to do is multiply R in and R out over, just so I don't have to deal with fractions as much. So VP times R out minus VS times R out equals VS times R in. I've multiplied the R in over here and the R out over here, and there we go. I can take this VS term and add it over here, so plus VS times R out, and now it's gone from over here, and then I can pull out the VS. I can say times VS, and then the VS is gone from inside the parentheses. So we're left with VP times R out equals R in plus R out times VS. And I'm actually going to stop right there. So just remember this, we'll be back here in a moment, I need to erase it for space because I don't have a wall size whiteboard. VP times R out equals R in plus R out quantity times VS. So that's one result we just got. What happens if we try to solve the other side for VS? Let's do the same thing and multiply R in and R out over to simplify, so I don't have to deal with fractions as much. So VN times R out minus VS times R out equals VS times R in minus V out times R in. I've multiplied the R in over here and the R out over there. Once again, let's bring all these terms over to the correct side. So V in times R out stays over here. The V out and R in term I'm going to put over here. So plus V out times R in. I added that term over. Now we have V s times R in, and I'm going to add this term over to this side, plus V s times R out. And if I were to pull the V s out of parentheses times V s and take it out of here, we get R in plus R out quantity times V s. You might recall we saw that a second ago. It doesn't have to be just V s. It's any quantity in algebra. If something equals something, it equals it. That's the end. If R in plus R out times V s equals this, 
and r in plus r out times vs equals that, then this equals that. So I can take away the r in plus r out times vs, which completely gets rid of vs, which we don't care about. And I can just put in what it equaled in the other equation, which was vp times r out. Nice and easy. Now we have something that's pretty clean. Well, now we can see we have vn, vp, v out, r in, r out. These are all the things we want. Nothing is in there that we don't want. And we want v out to be on one side because we want to see what v out is relative to the other stuff. So what if I bring this vn over? So minus vn times r out, subtract it over from this side, and then this is r out and r out. So let me write it over here. v out times r in equals r out times vp minus vn. I just pulled the r out out, and here's vp minus vn times r out. And then to isolate v out, we divide by r in over r in, and we're left with just v out equals, and there it is. r out over r in is our gain, if both r outs are the same value and both r ins are the same value. And it's just vp minus vn times that equals v out like we wanted. Bob is in fact your uncle. Isn't it clean and beautiful? So let's see it in action. My standard plus and minus five volt power supply I'll plug in. I'll put plus five volts into my chip, minus five volts into my chip, and I'll put the circuit zero over here, zero volts. Two power supplies to act as a signal pair, give them some current limit and leave them set on zero volts. Both of their negatives are connected to the circuit zero, and I'll have the one on the left be VP, the one on the right be VN. So I connect the VP signal into a 10K resistor. I'm going for unity gain here, so I'm using all 10K resistors. So VP into a 10K, the 10K out into the non-inverting input. And then from there, also through a 10K resistor to circuit zero. Then we have the VN signal into a 10K resistor. From there, into the inverting input. From there, through another 10K resistor, the fourth one. And out of there, this one is the feedback, so I'll put that in the output. Turn on my voltmeter, negative probe to circuit zero, and positive to the output. Currently have zero. So let's give us one volt on VP. So we got about one volt here. Let's give us half a volt on this one. Now we've got half a volt because one minus 0.5 is 0.5 and there's about 0.5. Let's make this two volts. And now we have about negative one because one minus two is about negative one. Couldn't be simpler. Finally, our diff amp is a diff amp. That took long enough. So I've now shown you basically all there is to op amps on a basic level. From this point on, it's combining them in crazy interesting ways to make more interesting circuits, such as attaching a Wheatstone bridge, which I'll get to in a minute. But this is basically all there is to an op amp. You just have the feedback and you figure out how to make your summing point reflect or be proportional to your output by using voltage dividers. Remember that you want a high input impedance so that you don't load whatever is feeding this op amp, but you don't want too high of an input impedance because it'll slow down the response time of your circuit too much. And then you want as low an output impedance as possible. Now, one thing about these amplifiers, all these op amps, is they can't really put out much current, even the power ones, even the op amps designed to put out a lot of current. A lot of current for an op amp is still not much current. It's not like a power transistor is going to give you. So soonish, I will be doing a video on how to hook up a transistor to an op amp to basically buffer it. You know how you might have complex logic and then you have one more gate at the end to buffer the internal chip workings from the output? Same thing here. You'll have the op amp actually doing its op amp thing, and then the transistor is just gonna be the valve that the op amp is turning to let the current through, and the transistor, you can hook up multiple in parallel, or you can just get one that's rated for multiple amps, and it'll work out great. So, more ways to use these op amp circuits, and more ways to make these circuits robust, coming in the future. For now, I'll be seeing you.